Just over a year ago, Tabata Amaral was a relatively unknown 25-year-old congresswoman in Brazil. But she became a household name in her country after a video of her critiquing the then conservative education minister went viral. Featured on a list of 100 rising stars by Time magazine, Amaral is now a force to be reckoned with in Brazilian politics. And that includes critiquing President Jair Bolsonaro's handling of the coronavirus. Brazil has now more cases of COVID-19 than any other country in Latin America. And the president there doesn't seem to really care. Tabata Amaral joins me now from Sao Paulo to discuss the situation in that country. Uh, Tabata Amaral, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Hello, Mary. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, you have around 7,000 cases, more than 200 deaths in your country. Those numbers have spiked this week. Uh, your country's health minister says uh, Brazil's healthcare system could be overwhelmed by the end of this coming uh, month. Do you agree? Just how bad are things going to get in Brazil, do you think? Well, besides all the numbers that you already brought, a lot of specialists in my country believe the numbers might be actually much uh, bigger than that because Brazil hasn't been able to test uh, all of the people who need it. And besides all of this situation and how profound of a, of a crisis we are having right now, our president keeps going to television and going on to social media to spread fake news, to spread lies, and to say this is a, just a, a little crisis. And by doing those things and by telling people to go to the streets and actually going himself to meet the crowds, what he did last weekend, he's putting like lives in danger. And what I keep asking myself is, will he be held accountable? Will he making himself responsible for all of the deaths that might come from his responsibility? I don't think so. He's saying some crazy stuff. He's referred to the coronavirus as a little flu, as hysteria, as a fantasy. He's accused the media and other politicians in Brazil, like yourself, of trying to trick uh, Brazilians. He said he wouldn't worry if he got the virus because of his history as an athlete. He's railed against governors who've tried to take action and, got, and get people to stay at home. How much of a danger is he, not just to Brazil, but to the wider region? Well, uh, first... I'm very ashamed by all of the things he's doing, especially in moments of crisis, such as this one. We need a leader who like, tells people everything will be all right. And he says he's doing those things because he's very worried about the economy. But all of these studies have shown that our health system doesn't have the capability to take all the people who need it if we don't flatten the curve. So what he's doing doesn't make any sense. He's actually forcing people and to... Uh, have access to food or taking the disease. What he should be doing, especially in a country as a Nico as my country, was to provide some type of cash transfer so people could actually stay at home during this time of need. And there have been very serious concerns that the president himself may have the virus. Uh, when he went to the US and met with Donald Trump and came back, more than 20 members of his delegation then tested positive for COVID-19. There were initial reports that the president himself had tested positive. One of them came from his own son. Uh, it was all later denied. Uh, do you believe he's covering up his own condition, perhaps? Well, um, he is not someone known for telling the truth and he hasn't been he hasn't showed his test so i think that's possible but the bigger point is that he's being extremely responsible we have 13 people um sorry 13 million people living in favelas in brazil those people don't have uh, access to infrastructure sometimes they don't have access to water if they don't receive any help from the government they they will starve they won't have anything to uh to buy their foods. And the con Congress has already uh, approved this project that guarantees that for three months, people will have 600 reais per month so they can actually stay at home and be safe. But the president and his government has been putting all types of difficulties. Always say, we don't have the money, we should protect the economy. But wh why are you protecting the economy if you are not taking care of the people in the first place? Yes. Um You've called Bolsonaro's rhetoric not just irresponsible, but, quote, homicidal on the subject of the coronavirus. You've also said a president that forces people to choose between sickness and a plate of food doesn't deserve the office. Isn't the problem for you, though, Tabata Amaral, that he won a clear majority less than 18 months ago in a free and fair presidential election in Brazil? Nearly 60 million of your fellow Brazilians wanted him as their president. That's the reality. Yes, and I'm... I know that our democracy is the thing we should value and protect the most. 
But that's uh, our democracy has three powers because of that. Congress and the legislative is there to make sure that the president is being held accountable. And democracy puts in him a lot of limitations. When the president goes on national te television, when he uses his social media to spread lies, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram have taken down uh, things that our president wrote because they believed that it, was, uh, it meant a harm to the community. So that's the type of person we are talking about. I don't think uh, when we say that the president is lying or when we try to protect the people, we are doing something undemocratic. No, I think it's the contrary. We are reminding him that he lives in a democracy and that our constitution, constitution puts a lot of limits on him to make sure that he's not using this power as being the president of our country to harm people. And when he tells people, go to the streets, come and meet me. Oh, this is just a little flu. He's actually putting people in danger. And like so, our constitution so would you, should be would there you to support save calls? Lives. If he's putting people in danger, would you support calls to impeach him? Because I believe polls now show that almost half the Brazilian public actually support impeaching and removing Bolsonaro from office. Is that something you support? Is that something you think is realistic, even in the middle of this crisis? I do think we have this conversation, and I do think he should be held accountable for everything he's doing, but after the crisis. I don't think my country can handle another crisis on top of coronavirus right now, because Congress is working um, just with computers from far away. And people are already very scared. Our economy is already very unstable. So as hard as it is to work with a president such as the one that we have, I do think we should try our best to protect people, to do what's necessary to combat coronavirus. But after all of this is over, I do think uh, it might be the time for the country to have this type of conversation. Because what he's doing, so I've never seen in our history. So for a lot of our viewers watching around the globe who are familiar with President Donald Trump in the US and his kind of serial fabrications and his cover-ups and his unreliability and reckless leadership and ridiculous comments about the coronavirus, uh, but are not so familiar with President Bolsonaro and what he said and done, how would you compare Bolsonaro and Trump? What are the similarities and differences? So Bolsonaro says uh, himself he's a big admirer of Trump. And especially in the beginning of uh, the coronavirus, when it just hit Brazil, he would, he, would, uh, he would say that, oh, Trump said that, so why can't I do the same? But President Trump is more pragmatic. Uh, when he saw all of the people who are there in the U.S., when he saw all of, all of what that uh, meant to his popularity, to the economy, he changed uh, his attitude. And Bolsonaro is not changing the attitude. The hope I have is that uh, no matter how many fake, fake uh, news he might spread in his social media, it doesn't matter how many lies he tells, facts will impose themselves. When people start losing love to us because of the responsibility of our president, I don't think he'll support him anymore. You have Bolsonaro at the top of the Brazilian political system causing havoc and chaos and not taking this seriously. But you also have many people in Brazil taking matters into their own hands. I believe the head of the Supreme Court and Bolsonaro's own health minister have repeatedly contradicted him on the threat posed by COVID-19. Governors have told residents to stay at home across Brazil. I believe one governor uh, said, quote, do not follow the guidance of the president. And even in some favelas, even in some shanty towns, you have uh, criminal and gang leaders imposing curfews to try and prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Are you heartened by Brazilians taking matters into their own hands? Is it enough to counter the damage being done from the top by Bolsonaro? Well, uh, what you said is true. We have uh, most of his ministers. We have the Supreme Court. We have Congress, governors, mayors who are taking an attitude that's completely different from um, President Bolsonaro. And we are doing a good job, like as a society. Uh, my state, uh, Sao Paulo, has 70% of the deaths by coronavirus. And uh, the governor you mentioned is uh, the governor in my state. And what he's doing is actually saving lives because he has been able to flatten the curves. And ideologically, I don't agree to most of these people, but they are doing what's necessary. My point here is that this is such a huge crisis. The whole situation is so hard to everyone that when we have to, uh, I don't know, just spend so much energy uh, with a president that tells people, go to the street, go and protest because you want to go out. And this is just a little flu. And he talks to millions of people who might hear him. 
it can be so frustrating that all of these people that we just mentioned are working so hard. I'm working so hard. Yeah. And you see the president on TV saying that it just makes our fort have a smaller impact. But it doesn't matter that we won't work because of that. It's just that Bolsonaro is the biggest leader in our country. We like it or not. And people listen to what he's saying. So that's why what he says matters so much and matters much more than what a specialist or what a governor might say, unfortunately. Unfortunately, Tabata Amaral, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Stay safe. Good luck. Thank you very much. That's our show. In fact, that's the last episode of Upfront for this season. Uh, Upfront will be back later this year, hopefully from a studio. Good luck. Stay safe. Try and stay indoors. Goodbye.